Hello Grade 7, I am Mom Romano and welcome to my class. Our very first topic is all about sets. What I need to know. At the end of the discussion, you are expected to first describe sets, kinds of sets, empty sets, and cardinality of sets. Second, illustrate sets kinds of sets, empty sets, and cardinality of sets. And last, perform operations involving sets. What's in? A set is a well-defined collection of elements denoted by this symbol that can share a common characteristics. So mga anak, tandaan nyo, ito ang symbol natin na gagamitin para sa elements. So ang sabi dito, Set is a well-defined collection of elements. Pero ano nga ba yung well-defined na sinasabi natin? So when we say well-defined, it means that it is possible to determine whether an object belongs to a given set. So pag sinabi daw natin well-defined, dapat merong exact and complete definition or description. Examples Set A is equal to X such that X are basketball and volleyball players in the grade 7 sunflower. Ito ba ay well-defined or not well-defined? Tama! This example is well-defined because the description is complete. It is possible to determine all the students in grade 7 sunflower who were basketball and volleyball players. So this example is well-defined. Next example. We have W is equal to cold months of the year. Is this well-defined or not well-defined? That's right. This example is not well-defined. Bakit? Kasi, hindi naman po kompleto yung description. Tandaan po natin, hindi lahat ng lugar sa daigdig o sa bansa o uh, ng bansa ay pare-parehas ng klima. So, maaaring sa bansa natin ngayon sa Pilipinas ay taglamig, pero sa ibang bansa ay tag-init. So, this example is not well-defined. Sets and its notation There is a fairly simple notation for sets. We use capital letters in the alphabet to name a set. Then, we simply list each element or member separated by a comma and put some curly brackets around the whole thing. Let us have this example, set of five fingers. If we are going to notate this, we can have F is equal to thumb, index, middle, ring, pinky, wherein these five are what we call the elements. So it is said that to name a set, we should use a capital letter from our alphabet. Here, I used capital letter F. Bakit po F? Kasi ang fingers po ay nagsisimula sa letter F. So, tandaan po natin, we can use any capital letters in the alphabet. Next, in writing the elements, it is important to separate each element with a comma o kung sa Tagalog ay tinatawag nating quit. So, every after element, we should separate it by putting a comma. And last, we should enclose all the elements with a curly bracket. Again, curly bracket lang po. Hindi pwede ang parenthesis or any other kinds of brackets. Remember, the elements or members or objects of a set can be anything. It can be numbers, people, letters of the alphabet, other sets, and so on. Examples Set T is equal to mango, coconut, apple, dot, dot, dot. Ano yung tatlong dots sa dulo? The three dots are called an ellipsis and mean continue on. So, ibig sabihin daw po, marami pang elements ang kasunod nito. Ellipsis is also a symbol for infinity. So, ibig sabihin, marami pa at may karugtong pa ang set nating ito. So, what can you say about set T? What kind of set is this? That's right. Set T is set of 
roots. Let us have the second set, set V. V is equal to mayon, taal, pinatubo. What kind of set is this? That's right, set V is a set of volcanoes. And last example, B is equal to dove, maya, and parrot. This set is a set of birds. That's right. So remember the symbol for the element? Don't forget that. So mango is an element of T. Writing it in symbol, we can have mango is an element of T, coconut is an element of T, apple is an element of T. For set V, we can have mayon is an element of V, taal is an element of V, pinatubo is an element of V. And last, here are the list of elements for set B. Again, don't forget our symbol for the element. Let us have this quick true or false question. First, mango is an element of B. True or false? That's right. Mango is not an element of B. That's why our answer should be false. Let us have another one. Taal is an element of T. True or false? That's right. It is false. Taal is not an element of T. So, kung mapapansin po natin, ang symbol natin para sa not element is the same symbol for the element. Ang pinakaiba lang, nilagyan po natin ito ng slash. Again, ang basa po dyan, not an element. Another thing to learn. A set which contains no element is called an empty or null set and denoted by an empty bracket or this symbol. Example. So, M is equal to months containing 32 days. Sige nga, mag-isip nga kayo ng buwan na mayroong 32 araw. Wala. So, ang pinakamaraming araw na natin sa loob ng isang buwan ay 31 days. So, if we are going to write this in symbol, we can have M is equal to an empty bracket or M is equal to the empty or null set symbol. So, tandaan lamang po natin, pag sinabing empty set or null set, ibig sabihin, ang set po natin ay walang element. Let's discuss the cardinality of a set. The cardinality of a set is the number of elements in a given set. It is written as n of a where n refers to the cardinality and a is the total number of elements in a given set. Let us have this example. How many fruits are in the basket? That's right, we have 4. So the cardinal number is equal to 4. Or in symbol, we have n of a is equal to 4. So, tandaan lamang po natin, when we say cardinality of a set, ito po yung bilang ng elements sa isang given set. Let us have another example. F is equal to fingers on your right hand. So, how many fingers do we have in our right hand? That's right, the cardinal number is equal to 5. Or in symbol, we have n of f is equal to 5. Now, let us discuss the ways to describe a set. So, we have three ways to describe a set. First is the verbal description. Second, the roster form. And last is the set builder notation form. Let us first discuss the verbal description. A set can be described by just defining it using plain words. Example, set D is the set of days of the week. We also have the second example, M is equal to the set of months of the year. So, verbal description from its literal meaning, we are just describing it using plain words. Next is the roster form. In roster form, 
Sets are conventionally denoted with capital letters. The elements in a set is denoted by open and closed curly brackets. So ito yung madalas nating ginagamit na paraan to notate a set. Let us have this example. In this cellular phone, the key number 7 represent 4 letters. Nakita po ba ang key number 7 sa ating cellular phone? So to illustrate this in a set, we let K be the set of letters in key 7 of a cellular phone keypad. So ano ba yung mga letters na, na nakikita natin sa key number 7? That's right. We have P, Q, R, and S. So in symbols, again, ang sabi po, use a capital letter to denote or to represent the set. So we have capital letter K. And then we need to put curly brackets and we need to separate the elements with a comma. So in symbols, we can have set K is equal to P, Q, R, S. Let's have a quick exercise about roster form. So, write the following in roster form. We have number one, seven days in a week. Number two, set of seasons in the Philippines. So, in order for us to easily write the roster form of a set, let us first identify the elements. So, in number one, we have the seven days in a week. So, what are the seven days in a week? We have Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sige nga, subukang gawin ang roster form ng set of 7 days in a week sa inyong sariling papel. Let us see if you got the same answer with mine. So, for number 1, we have set D or kung anumang capital letter ang ginamit nyo to name your set. So, sa akin, D ang ginamit ko because we have days. So, D is equal to Monday, comma, Tuesday, comma, Wednesday, comma, Thursday, comma, Friday, comma, Saturday, comma, and Sunday. Then, enclosed with curly brackets. Ganito rin ba ang nakuha niyong sagot? Magaling! Let us have number 2. Set of seasons in the Philippines. So, what are the set of seasons in the Philippines? Yan. Meron tayong taglamig at merong tag-init. Or, in English, we have the rainy season or the sunny season. Or in other terms, we can also have the wet and the dry season. Sige nga, subukang isulat ito sa roster form sa inyong sariling papel. Tingnan natin kung tama ang inyong sagot. So, for number 2, set S is equal to sunny and rainy. Or, we have set S is equal to wet or dry. Again, pwedeng gumamit ng ibang capital letter. Tama ba ang inyong naging sagot? Mahusay! And let us have the last one. Set Builder Notation. The Set Builder Notation describes the properties of the elements of the set. Let us have the same example. In Set Builder Notation, Set K is represented as this one. So, paano po ba natin ito babasahin? So, this one is read as K is equal to the set of all X's such that X is a letter on the key 7 of a cellular phone. So, ito pong guhit na ito, ang basa po dyan ay such that. So, again, we can read it as K is equal to the set of all X's such that X is a letter on the key 7 of a cellular phone. So here, instead of writing all the elements, we just describe the properties of the elements. 
Here are additional examples. Number one, A is a set of fruit. So if we are going to write it in roster form, we can have set A is equal to lychee, banana, mango, ellipsis. Natatandaan pa ba kung ano ang ellipsis? Again, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay mayroon pang karugtong na mga elements. So, pwede rin kayong sumulat ng ibang elements as long as ito ay isang fruit. So, if we are going to write this one in the set builder notation, we can just simply write set A is equal to X such that X is a fruit. Let us have the second example. Why is the set of numbers multiple of 2 less than 15? If we are going to write that in roster form, we can have set Y is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So again, as you can notice, sinunod natin yung elements na sinasabi doon sa ating description. So dapat daw multiples of 2 na less than lamang sa 15. Kaya tayo nag-stop sa 14. If we are going to write this one in set builder notation, we can have y is equal to all x's such that x is an even number less than 15. So, kung napansin natin, lahat na naging elements natin ay even number na less than 15. Or, we can also write y is equal to x such that x is a multiple of 2 that is less than 15. Naunawaan ba? Mabuti kung ganon. Ngayon naman ay pag-aralan natin ang additional terms tungkol pa rin sa sets. We have finite set, infinite set, and subset. Let us first define finite set. Finite set contains exact number or countable number of elements. So kapag finite set daw, mabibilang natin o merong eksaktong bilang ang elements para sa isang set. Example, set A is equal to fingers on your hand. Ilan lamang po ba ang fingers sa ating kamay? So, we have 5. So, this is considered a finite set. Next is the infinite set. It contains elements that has no end. So, kabalik na rin siya ng finite set na mayroong eksaktong bilang. Dito sa infinite set, ginagamit natin ang ellipsis or yung tatlong dot. So, tandaan po natin, ellipsis means infinite or it goes on forever. Example, set T is equal to mango, coconut, apple, ellipsis, or dot, dot, dot. And last is the subset. Subset is a set of elements that are also in another set and is denoted by this symbol for proper subset and this symbol if the subset is the set itself. Let us have an example. Let u is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then we have another set, the set A and B. In set A, we have A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8. And in set B is equal to 1, 3, 5, 9. Ano po ang napansin natin? Lahat ng elements na makikita natin sa set A at set B ay makikita din po sa elements ng set U. So here, we can say set A is a subset of U. And also, set B is a subset of U. O kung tatandaan po natin, uh, sa set U, nakapaloob lahat ng elements na present sa iba pang given set. Another terms. Equal sets, equivalent sets, and universal sets. Equal sets contains two or more sets that has exactly the same elements. Example, if set A is equal to 2, 4, 6, and set B is equal to 4, 6, 2, then set A is equal to set B. Kung napapansin po natin, parehas na parehas lamang ang element ng set A at set B, kaya tinawag itong equal sets. Next, equivalent sets. Two sets that has the same number of elements or the same cardinality of a set. Example, given set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, and set B is equal to A, B, C, then N of A is equal to 3, and N of B is equal to 3. So, parehas po sila na mayroong tatlong element lamang. 
So therefore, we can write set A is congruent to set B. So the congruent symbol is used in representing equivalent. And last, universal sets. So the totality of elements under the consideration and is usually represented by U symbol. Example, let U is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, and we have set A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8. And set B is equal to 1, 3, 5, 9. So kung kanina ang tawag natin sa set A at set B ay subset, ang tawag naman natin ngayon dito sa set U ay yung universal set. O kung saan dito nakapaloob lahat ng elements na meron pa doon sa mga subsets. Let us further discuss subset. So tulad ng sinabi kanina, a subset is a set of elements that are also in another set and is denoted by this symbol for proper subset and this symbol if the subset is the set itself. If every member of set A is also a member of set B o yung lahat daw ng element ng set A ay element din ng set B, then A is said to be a subset of B. Written in the symbol, A is a subset of B are also pronounced as A is contained in set B. Example, set A is equal to grade 7 Sampagita students. Set B is equal to female students from grade 7 Sampagita. And set C is equal to tall students. In this set, we may conclude that set B is a subset of A since all the elements of set B are also belongs to set A. In symbols, we can have B is a subset of A. On the other hand, set C cannot be considered as a subset of set A nor set B since the set of tall students is not well defined. So therefore, C is not a subset of A. Take note! A set must be well defined so that there were no ambiguities about whether or not an object belongs to the set. Any set has at least two subsets, the empty set and the set itself. And last, in finding the number of subsets, we may use the formula S is equal to 2 raised to N, where N is the number of elements in the given set. Example, if the set has 4 elements, then we can have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. It means there are 16 subsets. Let us have this one. Determine the number of subsets in a given set. Example, set A is equal to blue, red, yellow. Writing the subsets, so the first one is is the empty set. Then we can have the blue, red, yellow, blue, red, blue, yellow, red, yellow, and blue, red, yellow, or the set itself. So counting all the subsets we have written, we have eight subsets in total. Another example, set B is equal to one, two, three. So let us write all the subsets. So we can have the empty set, 1, 2, 3, 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, or the set itself. Let us now use the formula. So we can have S is equal to 2 raised to N. In set B, we have 3 elements. So we can have 2 is raised to the third power. Then we can have 2 times 2 times 2. And the final answer is 8. It means we have 8 subsets for the set B. Now let's move on to the operations on set. The first operation is the union of sets. So it is the set containing the combined elements of two or more sets and is denoted by this symbol. 
Example, find the union of set A is equal to 1, 2, 3 and set B is equal to 3, 2, 3 4, 5. So, pag sinabi natin union of set, pagsasamahin lang natin o i-combine lang natin lahat ng elements ng given set. So, for this example, we can have A union B is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, remember, kapag kaparehas lang naman ang isang element nila, hindi natin ito isusulat ng dalawang beses. Isang beses lamang natin ito isusulat. Then, we have intersection of sets. So, intersection of sets is a set that has common element and is denoted by this symbol. O ito yung symbol na pabaligtad na U. Example, find the intersection of set C is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And set D is equal to 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. So in set C and set D, the intersection or the common element o ang pinagkaparehas lamang nila na element ay 6, 12, and 18. So our final answer, C intersect D is equal to 6, 12, and 18. And that's all! Keep safe and God bless!